Hello, what is going on, guys? Hockey Guy one here. Welcome to my review of The Incredible Hulk. Well, the Incredible Hulk is directed by Louis Leterrier and stars Edward Norton, Liv Tyler, Tim Roth, Tim Blake Nelson, Ty Burrell, and William Hurd. The story is basically about Bruce Banner who ends up turning into the Hulk and ends up working in this thing, factory in Brazil. So, and, and General Ross ends up going after him basically because of the whole Hulk thing, and then he sends Emil Blonsky after him. And the base basically wants to become the exact same thing, you know, as what the Hulk is. So he does eventually end up turning into the abomination where where he first ends up realizing that it's the uh, they kind of need the Hulk to save the day in this situation. For positives, I guess Betty Ross was a decently written character, at least with her whole relationship with her father, General Ross, at least. As basically, she, he just doesn't really like what he's doing and basically just has to try and make him not really go after Bruce and Lauren. And, and honestly, that is, that is a decent amount of character for her. And I do kind of like at least that aspect of her character. And I guess the action was fine when it is there. I mean, there isn't really much of it, but I do guess I like it when it's there as you do get the like, whole fighting a bomb which was pretty well choreographed for this and I do think that that was a pretty entertaining fight scene I guess even if it wasn't exactly the best story wise I do think that action wise it, it is fine I guess and it is pretty cool to see I guess. And the lighting was pretty good I guess I mean they do have enough of it where you can see what's going on when it's at night, but this film is mostly in the daytime, so it's not really fully relied upon. But when they use it, I guess it's good enough because you can see what's going on. And the set designs are pretty good for what they are, I guess. I mean, they do at least kind of have the capture of New York City when they're there, and I do like the looks of it when they're in Brazil. And all, all the locations that they're in are pretty decent I guess and I do think that they do a pretty good job of replicating those places and kind of, of doing a good job picking the sets and well and doing a good job with them. That said this movie does have a lot of negatives like the story for example it's just kind of a mess if I'm being honest I mean it's basically just kind of Bruce Banner's on the run from then he is Ross and as well as Milbonsky basically because he is a Hulk. And it doesn't really get brought anywhere. It's basically just that and they don't really do anything entertaining with it to make it feel like it. That to be a story and they don't really add anything to it. And they just really just have it be a chase and, and that's about it. And I especially think that they try to stuff it up too much when they try and they have Emil Blonsky willing to turn into the abomination. I mean, it's it doesn't really get brought in anywhere until right before the climax. As I mean, they do give them the idea before that, but they don't really bring it anywhere until right before the climax. And it doesn't really make sense for the story as it's not really brought in anywhere. And as well as just, you know, there's like the whole Betty Ross kind of thing was thrown in there and... I do think that the relationship between her and Bruce, they, they could have been done better as it doesn't really feel like they brought it that much anywhere inside the story of this movie. Structure as well is not good at all. I mean, you got the first act, which I mean, kind of shows how he became the Hulk, and, he, and it's just how he, he destroyed the planet, and then basically in the second act, it kind of goes in Brazil, and basically... He ends up turning to the Hulk and again basically goes on a whole chase scene. And, I mean, that's pretty much the entire second act is just a chase scene. It doesn't really get brought in anywhere, like I said earlier. I mean, you know, it just, just doesn't really feel like it adds anything. I mean, it's just a whole chase scene and running away. I mean, it just becomes really repetitive after a while. And especially since they don't really do anything different and keep it entertaining and... It just really isn't brawn anywhere. And then there's kind of the third act where eventually it has 
Blonsky turning into the abomination, and then they had, like, a forced reference to the leader, which is, like, this Hulk villain in the comments, and they kind of referenced him there, but then they smiled at the camera, which ended up not really being brought anywhere, and then there's kind of, like, the whole abomination thing, and where he's going in the streets, so this doesn't really, really work, story-wise, even if the action itself is good, I mean, it, it's, it's that, it doesn't really make sense, story-wise, as basically, it was kind of random to, to all of a sudden have, have Ross trust Bruce Banner into fighting him, and it just felt like it was kind of random, and then there's the ending, which just isn't really that satisfying, it was basically just, just Hulk, Hulk basically showing him something angry again, and and then, as well as Ross talking to Tony Stark, which, I mean, that kind of ending seemed like it could have worked. I mean, it is basically supposed to set up future events in the MCU, but I feel like this, the ending itself just, I don't know, there's something about it that just doesn't really work for me. I mean, it didn't really feel like it wrapped up the movie, it felt more like an end credit scene than, than anything, because it didn't really feel like it wrapped up the movie, it, it just felt like it was kind of random, and just doesn't really feel like it really works for an ending of The Incredible Hulk. Pacing is not good at all, I mean, it just gets really repetitive after a while, so it kind of makes the movie feel kind of boring because it just gets really repetitive after a while and doesn't really do anything new with the ideas and just repeats basically the same thing where he's running away and then and then turns into the whole Hulk and that's a, that's basically a lot of it and then it just it just makes the film feel kind of boring and just kind of longer than it, it really should have been because of how repetitive it was. If I'm being honest, Bruce Banner doesn't really have much character. I mean, they kind of just have him run away, and that's mostly his character. I mean, I guess they do kind of show some of his science side, but they don't really bring much of his scientist side to this. I mean, they don't really show much of how he is as a scientist in this movie. And it's really just most of his character is just him running away, and they don't really bring it anywhere other than that. I mean, even his relationship with Betty Ross isn't really brought anywhere. I mean, it's basically just saying that he, he got away from her, and then eventually they get back together, and then randomly, because the plot said so, they don't really bring it that much anywhere other than that. And they don't really bring his character anywhere outside of those few character traits there, and... I wish they did a bit more of that, considering this is our main protagonist. General Ross just doesn't really have much character. I mean, if I'm being honest, there wasn't really much to him. I mean, he just wants to go after Bruce Banner, and, and he doesn't really have much else to him other than he really made a mistake and turned him into the Hulk by mistake because of the radiation. And then it doesn't really have much character other than... He, He's going after him, and then all of a sudden he trusts Banner to go after him just because the abomination is doing what he's doing in there, and it just seems like it's kind of random. I mean, he in like a few scenes before that, he didn't really like Banner as a Hulk and wants to go after him, and then all of a sudden he trusts him just because of the abomination there. So, I mean, it just feels like. He only changed because the plot told him to, and so forward. it kind of makes it kind of bad character development, and I wish they gave him a bit more than just that to, to actually make it feel like it was somewhat of believable character development. Samuel Stearns is terribly ruined. I mean, there isn't really much to his character. I mean, in a few scenes, it shows him kind of typing through this thing called Mr. Blue to Bruce Banner, but... It doesn't really get Bron anywhere. I mean, he just thinks he has some sort of antidote that can reverse the whole kind of radiation, and that doesn't really get Bron anywhere, so it doesn't really feel like it's worth it to be in this movie. And 
just isn't really brought anywhere. And they should have done a bit more with that. And then there's also well, how he ends up getting tricked into making Blonsky into the abomination. And there's isn't really much else to him. I guess they did have that reference to where he becomes the leader, but they that isn't really brought anywhere either since this movie never read a sequel and it's just that one scene where he's smiling at the camera and they don't really bring it anywhere else besides that and it just feels like they didn't really do much with his char character and they definitely should have done a lot more with him considering the potential they had to do with this kind of character. And there's Emil Blonsky or the Abomination who is a villain that doesn't really have much character. I mean, there isn't really much to him. I mean, he's just, he basically just wants to become what, what Bruce Banner became in the Hulk and that's about it. I mean, he doesn't really have much reasons to other than he wants to be strong and, and that doesn't really have much motivation to him. I mean, there isn't much to him other than that. I mean, he's, he's just kind of a generic villain. He doesn't really do anything much. I mean, it's just that he doesn't really have much character. I mean, he's just your generic villain who, who wants to be just like your hero and just wants to be powerful. I mean, there's nothing else to him other than that. I'm being honest, the acting was kind of bad. I mean, Edward Norton just... He didn't really seem like he was into the role that much. I mean, he definitely seemed like he didn't really want to be there. I mean, just about every scene, he just looked really bored. And just just that his delivery just felt off and just didn't really feel like the character. Same thing can go for just about every other actor in this movie. I mean, I mean Liv Tyler just definitely did not feel like she felt like Betty Ross. I mean, she just felt like... She was kind of phony and didn't really feel like she was trying with her delivery that much and just felt like she didn't really interest in. Same thing goes for for Tim Roth. I mean, he especially just didn't feel like the character. I mean, she just did not feel like he was into the role that much and I definitely don't think he could have done much better in the role as he just didn't really feel... Like, he was into it very much, and, and, and as well as William Hurt, it says, as Ross, it doesn't really, it really feel like the character, I mean, just, his delivery was off, and just felt like he wasn't really trying that much. The visual effects were pretty bad, if I'm being honest, especially if you look at the CGI Hulk, just, it just feels kind of incomplete, especially, like, when you look at its chest, and it's feels like they should have spent more money on it. It's also like when they're having Bruce Banner turn into the Hulk, it definitely feels like they could have spent more money on the CGI because it just doesn't really feel very realistic. I mean, it looks incomplete. The same thing goes for the Abominations design. It just really feels incomplete and it just feels like they could have done better with it, especially since it just it doesn't really feel that realistic and I feel like they could have spent more money on it. Cinematography was kind of bad. I mean, a lot of the whiteouts that they use are just kind of random. I mean, it kind of like shows a whiteout thing when, when Bruce Banner's in the one last place and it just doesn't really feel like it needed to be there and it just felt like they could use a close-up for this and they do that a lot in the film when they're going to use a whiteout when it makes more sense for a close-up to be there and it just feels like they could have done a lot better with the cinematography. The editing is really bad. I mean, it's really choppy, especially when they show scenes of Bruce Banner running. They just change the camera angle a lot, and it doesn't really feel like a smooth transition, and it just feels like it's all over the place, and I definitely feel like they could have done better with the editing and make it feel more smooth rather than what they did when they made it go all over the place and just really choppy, especially in running scenes. Overall, The Incredible Hulk is an awful movie and it's definitely one of the worst movies in the MCU. So I'm gonna give The Incredible Hulk a 3 out of 10. That was my review of The Incredible Hulk. What are your thoughts on The Incredible Hulk? Tell me in the comments below and I'd like to thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.